This time of year, you may be driving down the road or notice trees in your neighborhood starting to bloom, just like this tree right here, Eastern Redbud. For our habitat goals in this area, we have a few more red buds than we want. And today, we're gonna to be terminating the red buds. Now, before you start he and hawing about us terminating red buds, a beautiful tree, hear me out. We're trying to promote more native grasses and forbs, which is high quality, very productive habitat for many, many species. There's no denying this is a beautiful tree, but it's not near as productive for habitat and wildlife as we can get out of other species. This is a great example right here. You look at this tree, we've got multiple stems, it's shading out the ground, and in this area right here, we've got 10, 15 feet of nothing growing on the ground. And right on the edge here where we're getting sunlight, there's high quality green basal rosettes of forbs and a lot of grass is starting to come up. This is offering food for wildlife right now. Underneath this red bud, it's shaded, there's nothing going on. Some of you may say, hey, it's a lagoon, don't hit that. Well, even though it's a lagoon and makes a pod very similar to a bean pod, it doesn't have the nodules to fix nitrogen. So it's not really doing anything for the soil. We can get more legumes out here where there's sunlight hitting the ground that are fixing nitrogen and providing high quality nutrition. Think 15, 20% protein. That's huge for those does making milk, going into fawning season, and bucks that have shed antlers and starting antler genesis. Don't worry, there's still gonna be red buds on the landscape here at the Proving Grounds too. We're not near as angry at them as we are at like Eastern Red Cedars or something like that. However, at this specific site, we're starting to lose this native habitat to red bud saplings. And that's something we need to address. A few years ago, this area was chock full of Eastern Red Cedars. And we felled those cedars, allowed them to lay for two years, then used prescribed fire to start consuming those skeletons. And that allowed a lot of sunlight to the ground. That first fire was done in April of 2022. That following growing season, there was a lot of sunlight reaching the ground. Great native grasses and forbs were starting to respond, but we also noticed we we're starting to see some red bud saplings starting to come up. We were hoping to get a fire in here last dormant season, maybe set back or top kill those saplings. Conditions weren't right, weren't able to burn during that dormant season. Fast forward to the summer of 2023, we thought we're gonna try to get a growing season fire in there, which a growing season fire does a really good job at terminating hardwood saplings. And that's because all that energy is up top. You run a hot fire through there, we damage or girdle those saplings. When that energy goes back down to the roots in the fall, it doesn't have enough to come back up the next spring. That's one reason we like those growing season fires in our prescribed fire rotation, to help control those hardwood saplings from encroaching. Unfortunately, the conditions didn't allow us to get that growing season fire. It's not looking like we're gonna be able to get a dormant season fire this year. So we've gone two years without a fire in this area and we've started noticing our fuel load starting to go down, which is gonna to be tough to get that next fire in here to carry. And we're getting a lot of saplings. So what we wanna to do today is terminate these saplings, cut them, get more sunlight to the ground so we can increase our fuel load to allow that next fire to do some really good habitat work. Growing deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, PH Outdoors, Moultrie Mobile, Steel, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, Fourth Arrow, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Prescribed Fire is a great wildlife habitat management tool. 
But given conditions, schedules, it can be tough sometimes to get a fire in these areas when you need them to meet specific objectives. That's when you might need to use herbicide as a follow-up after getting more sunlight to the ground, whether you're doing a TSI project, felling cedars, or opening up enough area to get sunlight in the ground to promote those native grasses and forbs. That's what we're doing today. We're touching up, using a little herbicide here and there to terminate red buds. And the reason why we're targeting red buds right now is they're really showy and easy to identify. We've got these flowers. Of course, the bark is very patchy. It's fairly easy to identify. What we're doing today is taking that steel electric saw and doing a stump cut and applying herbicide to that stump. That's gonna allow more sunlight to reach the ground, a better response of those grasses and forbs coming on into the growing season. So maybe we can get a fire in here during this growing season, but have enough fuel to carry that fire. These tops are gonna lay on the ground. They may be consumed by the next fire, maybe not, but we're gonna have a lot more sunlight reaching the ground. Now, if you have an area that has a quite a few red buds, what happens is those seeds, they may hit the ground and they may not germinate for a couple of years. So you're gonna to need to keep coming back and touching up. And if you get fire in the mix, hopefully set them back even more. And it takes a little time, but eventually we can get this area back into that beautiful native savanna type habitat with you know, high quality oaks through here, maybe a red bud here and there that survives but we're really focusing on that zero to three feet for a lot of native habitat for wildlife. Maybe you've done some TSI or logging where you hunt and it's not red buds that come back, but it's another species, maybe an invasive species or even a native species, but it's a bit more aggressive and you just need to stay on top of it a bit more. Grant was just an Illinois assisting landowner. They had logging done a couple years ago and bush honeysuckle came in and just overtook that property. It's gonna be a pretty expensive and time consuming project to get on top of that bush honeysuckle and get more sunlight to the ground. I was recently in Georgia and a couple years ago, 10, 15 years ago, they had they had purchased a property that had been clear cut. They'd removed the pines and there was no follow up. And that property was covered up in sweet gums and goldberry. At ground level, there was nothing for critters and it was thick. You couldn't squeeze a bullet through most of that property. These landowners are gonna need to use herbicide and get prescribed fire in the mix to start promoting better habitat. If you're gonna be doing any logging projects or TSI, once you get more sunlight to the ground, there are gonna be species that respond more rapidly than others. And if they're very aggressive or invasive, you could lose that habitat once again. So make sure you have a really good plan in place if you're going to encourage native habitat and get more sunlight to the ground. That may mean fire, herbicide, or other techniques but make sure you have a good plan for once sunlight's reaching the ground. This morning I was patterning the Winchesters, getting ready for turkey season. It's coming, folks. And this afternoon we're out doing some habitat work. It's a wonderful time to get outside and enjoy creation. But more importantly, I hope you slow down this week, listen to the Creator and the purpose He has for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.